In this video, I wanna go over what I do and how I post photos to Instagram to get the most engagement possible. Let's jump into it. What's going on guys, Brady here. Welcome back to another video. If it's your first time here, please consider subscribing, hitting that thumbs up button to support the channel. So today I wanted to talk about Instagram and photography, most notably landscape photography. Instagram is a fantastic platform to really showcase your work as an artist and a great way to grow a fan base around your work. But as a landscape photographer, it's not really the most ideal app for landscape photography. So we have to make some tweaks here and there on how we post the photos to really maximize our engagement out of the app. As you know, Instagram is a portrait oriented app. So you can't take the phone, turn it sideways and view anything in landscape orientation. So because of this, when I'm in the field shooting, photographing a scene, I always, always take a portrait oriented shot. So even if the scene makes sense shooting it like this, I always take a shot like this too. I actually have been thinking about making a video of this for like a year now, how the smartphone era has completely changed the landscape photograph. But I don't know, that might be a later video. But I mean, if you think about it, portrait oriented landscape photos really allow you to get some really unique scenes. They'll be really strong in the foreground and that's what leads your viewer in to that photo. So that's what's gonna get them to stop scrolling past post after post to see your photo, that really catchy foreground that takes up most of the screen space on your phone. So with that said, I still almost always take a uh, landscape oriented photo too. And uh, let me tell you why. So for instance, I took this one the other day. I actually just posted that on my Instagram last night. So. Be sure to follow me there too. But as you can see, I posted that on Instagram in the portrait orientation, but I did take another one in landscape mode because I sell my photos. And in the past, I have had customers reach out to me and say, hey, I really like that photo you posted, but I really need it to be you know, the other way for the wall space I'm trying to fill. So when they do say that, I do have a landscape oriented one too, so I'm covered there. And for some photos, there's just no way around it. Uh, landscape oriented ones are gonna win out and I still do post those as well. Actually, my most popular photo I posted this year was taken in landscape mode. So when I go about posting those photos, I actually post a couple different crops of it. So the first one is going to be more of a squared crop focused in on the subject of that photo. And then the second one where you can swipe over and view it again will be the full landscape photo. This allows the initial look on your post to be more eye catching and take up a little bit more of the screen on the Instagram platform. Okay. Now with all that said, Let's jump into my computer here. I'll show you kind of my workflow there and my export settings out of Lightroom. All right, guys. Uh, so I use Lightroom as my editing app. And as you can see here, here's the picture I posted last night on Instagram. It's obviously the portrait oriented one. It's got the log that kind of leads you into the, the distant hills in the background. And then uh, I used an ND filter to smooth out the lake in this photo. And I did take this photo on the brand new Nikon 14 to 24 f 2.8 S lens for the Z system Nikons. Nisi did send me some ND filters to test out. So I'm having fun doing that, but I've got a full video review coming up on them as well. Anyway, so here's the portrait one I took. And then also I took the same picture in landscape mode right here too. I didn't clean some of the sensor spots up on this because my, my camera sensor needs to be cleaned very badly, so sorry about that. Anyway, so if someone were to request this photo in landscape orientation, I have it here for a little wider angle view. But for social media, I post it right here. I post the upright version. It's just a lot better for viewers on a phone. After I'm all done editing it, I go up to export. I have a few different presets for export, but for this, I'm gonna click social. So for my social export settings, I don't rename it or anything, but I do put it in a subfolder and it goes into just a social folder. Then for image file settings here, uh, image format's going to be JPEG, color space. I use sRGB. Uh, the quality, I use 85%. You can do 100. It just kind of makes the file a little larger. Uh, I really haven't seen a difference from 85 to 100. Down to image sizing, I do resize to fit because it's going to resize it anyway when you post on Instagram or Facebook or wherever you're posting it. So what I do to that to maximize it is 
<clears throat> I resize to fit on the long edge and I do 2048 pixels and then resolution 72 pixels per inch. My preset is sharpened for matte paper. I'm not really sure why it should be set to screen. And then another thing I've got to really adjust every time is my watermark. And I don't like my watermark to be too distracting from the image. So what I'll do is I'll make it faint and once you're done, you're done export there's that let's jump back over there and i'll show you kind of what i do on my phone for the next step Alrighty, guys so now once you have the photograph onto your phone i'm going to edit this very very slightly for mobile viewing so an app i used to do that is called snapseed so i'm going to share it to snapseed and very very slightly edit this so the ambience is something i like to bring up a little bit maybe make it a little more contrasty shadows don't really need much i just make some very very slight adjustments and sometimes i'll add a little bit of hdr not what it does there just very very slightly like two or three so as you can see it just very slightly changes it just to give it a little more pop for instagram Sometimes I'll go into the tone curves just to make it a little more dramatic. So as you can see, if I press my thumb down and do the before, that was from the computer. That's that's how I would print the image from my computer. And then if you go like that, that just kind of makes it pop a little more for Instagram. So save it. And then there you go. You type up your caption and then use the hashtags. The hashtags are going to bring new people in, have new people discover your work. So I always type out the hashtags and make it so it's relatable to your image obviously so here is my most popular image of the year this is in obviously in landscape orientation so what if i wanted to post this photo right now to give it the most eye appeal so what i would do i have an app called right here panorama crop what you do hit no crop i'll do a white background export that now we'll go into instagram so right there that's going to be your first image then your second image will go back to gallery this will be your second image so there you go now you got your full post there and then your second post will be that so We'll go way back to when I posted that photo. So when that shows up on your feed, it's the full square. And then my next one is the full image. So anyways, guys, that's what I do to post photos on Instagram to try and maximize the engagement I get from it. So if you learned anything from it, hit that thumbs up button, please. If you got any recommendations on what to do, drop a comment below. Thanks for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.